The blockchain trillium now is a fundamental problem of blockchain that every blockchain developer needs to know. It basically states that out of three properties, decentralization, security, and scalability, blockchain can only have two of them. How comes and what is the consequence for existing blockchain like Ethereum and EOS? We'll see this in this video. Hey, I'm Julian and on my channel Eat The Blocks, I teach blockchain development and how to get your first blockchain job. Security, scalability and decentralization. Let's go over these three properties and see exactly what they mean. So first, security. We want to make sure that the, the data of the blockchain is reliable. In particular, we don't want to be hacked. So, for example, if we have some Ether on Ethereum, we don't want our Ether to be stolen either from our address or from a smart contract. Decentralization means that we don't want to have anybody that is able to censor any transaction on the blockchain. And that implies that many different people need to run the blockchain software. And the last property is scalability. And this is something that you'll stumble upon a lot if you study blockchain, but actually, this is really misunderstood. So what does it mean? So it basically describes the ability of a system to increase its output proportionally to its input. So let's take an example uh, with us humans. So if we eat some food, so that's our input, we have more energy and we are able to produce more work. So that's our output. But the problem is that this relationship doesn't hold for a long time because if you keep eating at some point it will make you sick and your output will stop increasing and it will even start to decrease. So humans are not really scalable but example of scalable system in real life are for example factories. So if you provide more workers and more raw material to factories that will be able to produce more goods as output. For blockchain scalability means the ability to handle more incoming transaction. So the input will be more transaction and the output would be how many transactions were processed in a reasonable amount of time. And unfortunately, many blockchains are not really good at this. Let's play around with these three properties and let's see what are the different combinations that are possible. First, decentralization and security. And that's basically the combination that is used by most public blockchains like Ethereum or Bitcoin. So the basic idea is that if you want to have security, you need to make it really difficult to make what we call a 51% attack. In a 51% attack, a group of attackers band together and attack the network by running a fake version of Bitcoin that will give us basically all the Bitcoin of the network. So if you don't have many nodes in the network, it's easier to carry out this attack. For example, if you just have five nodes on the network, and you want to attack it, then you only need to convince two other nodes so that three will be the majority out of the five nodes and your attack will be successful. But now what about instead of five nodes, you have thousands of nodes. Now you need to convince many more people if you want to carry out a successful attack and that's much harder. And if you keep increasing the number of nodes, at some point it becomes almost impossible. And what is interesting with this is that it works quite well with another objective of decentralization because the more nodes in the network, the more decentralized your network is. However, the problem is that the more nodes in the network, the harder it is to keep a consensus on the network, which means to synchronize the state of all the nodes of the network because every time there is a new block that is added to the network, it needs to be propagated to even more and more nodes and it takes more and more time. Another combination is security and scalability and that's what we have on the EOS blockchain. So in order to have more scalability, we will reduce the number of nodes. So on the EOS blockchain, there are only 21 miners on the network. And in order to keep it secure, we don't allow anybody to be a miner, but you need to be pre-approved in order to participate. The big disadvantage of this is that now your blockchain is not decentralized at all. And this is very easy for these 21 miners to decide to, to do any sort of censorship. And this actually already happened on EOS. And the big issue with this is that decentralization is really one of the core principles of blockchain. And if you sacrifice this, you can't really call yourself a blockchain anymore. So I don't actually consider EOS a blockchain, but it's more like a distributed database with some blockchain characteristics. 
And the next combination would be decentralization and scalability. And there isn't any example of this in existing blockchain, but the way we could do this is by tweaking the consensus algorithm. And in particular, if we reduce the block time, which is the average time between two different blocks, we'll be able to squeeze more transactions per unit of time. So the blockchain will be able to absorb more transactions. But the problem with this is that it's going to create more temporary fork of the network because sometimes what happens on blockchain network is that different miners at different places in the world find a block at exactly the same time and so temporarily you have a couple of diverging blockchain but these are just temporary because at some point the network decide to converge on a single version of the blockchain and when this happens we call this a blockchain reorganization and then the blockchain keeps going in a secure way as it did before but the problem is that before the reorganization if you send a transaction to one of the alternative branch of the blockchain then you might have a big problem for example if you sell a product against some Bitcoin so you actually transfer the ownership of a real-life item like a like a car and you receive a Bitcoin but this Bitcoin is not a real Bitcoin because this is on this alternative branch of the blockchain. But after the, block, uh, after the blockchain reorganization, you don't have this Bitcoin anymore. So that's why this combination of decentralization and scalability reduces the security of the blockchain. So out of decentralization, security and scalability, we can have three at the same time, or can we? Well, actually, that's the whole debate around the scalability of blockchain. And actually, on Ethereum, the way we are trying to get the three at the same time is with two categories of solution. The first category is on-chain solution, and the second category is off-chain solution. So off-chain solution, also called layer two solution, consists in some sort of secondary blockchain where you have uh, less security, but they are way more scalable. And a couple of examples of this is the Redden network or the Loom network. And for the on-chain solution, that's basically what Ethereum 2.0 is about. And in the system, the idea is to basically have different blockchain. We call these shards. And so we don't have a single blockchain that needs to process all the transaction, but we split the work in different chunk. And recently, we also had some other scalability solution like zero knowledge proof and rollups, but these are still in the research phase. So as a blockchain developer, there are many other things you need to understand about blockchain and Ethereum. And if you want to dive deeper in the topic, you can check out this playlist. I'll see you there.